cases, we've got electricity coming into the computer room and that electricity is being consumed by some device. And as I said, every kilowatt of electricity becomes a kilowatt of heat that needs to be removed. So starting here in the mainframe days, we've got a, a big box sitting in the computer room on the slab or the raised floor and we've got chilled water, we've got water flowing through the chassis, picking up that heat, taking the heat out of the chassis with liquid and likely taking it to a chiller and then with a um, uh, heat transfer, there, the process that occurs in the chiller, that heat is transferred to another liquid, to the condenser water, and that condenser water carries the heat out to a cooling tower of some form where the environment can pass through and the heat is ultimately rejected to the atmosphere. So in this case, we had these two loops of liquid and then the final loop of air to remove the heat from the, from the room. And so liquid was very close. It was up against the source of the heat in, in the computer room. So now moving to uh, the server phase of the industry, when IT equipment started to be designed to fit in these discrete U units, the decision was made to switch to air cooling because it's such a flexible solution. All the equipment is immersed essentially in air. You put a fan in it and it's gonna suck air in the front and blow air out the back and it's gonna take care of itself and cool itself. Uh, hopefully you're providing the right inlet air temperature to the face of the cabinets, but it's essentially gonna take care of itself quite flexibly. This is when we have air cooling. We have air as the first loop. Air is what's picking up the heat from the source and carrying that heat to a perimeter cooling unit, be it a, a cray in this case with a chilled water loop, or it could be a crack uh, air conditioner system with a refrigerant cycle. Um, but we have the perimeter cooling units picking up the heat from the air, and now the heat enters a liquid, and the liquid is gonna carry the heat away either directly outdoors if you have a, a compressor-based system, or to the chiller again, if you have a chilled water system, passing it to the condenser water and out to the cooling tower again. So moving on to the in-row cooling, we now, instead of having the cooling at the perimeter of the room, we move the cooling closer to the load. Now we have cooling units. Basically, it's a, a small cooling unit sitting in the row of the cabinets. And we're just showing one loop of air here, but of course the air that's coming out of this cooling unit is, is going and serving all the IT equipment in this row. And it's the air that's the loop that picks up the heat, brings the heat back to a cooling unit where heat exchange process occurs to pass the heat to the liquid. And then the liquid carries it out of the building once again. So we've moved the heat uh, we've moved the liquid a little closer to the heat source in this case. And now moving to the next step to rear door heat exchangers, we're getting now uh, the liquid on the back of each of the cabinets. We have a rear door heat exchanger mounted on the backs of each of the cabinets. And rear door heat exchangers are often referred to as a liquid cooled solution. They, are, they do have liquid flowing through them. And uh, so there is liquid cooling occurring in that sense, but it is not truly liquid cooling because liquid is not removing the heat from the source. Air is still removing the heat from the source and it's only carrying it for a couple of inches before it passes that heat to the liquid flowing through the uh, radiators in the rear door. And then again, through the loops of liquid uh, to pass the heat out to the environment once again. Here is the first time that we get liquid back to the source. So with touch cooling, we have now a, either a row-based cooling distribution unit as is shown in this picture, or they could be rack-mounted cooling distribution units. But this is again, another liquid to liquid heat exchanger that, uh, transfers the heat that is picked up from the IT components by liquid 
to a liquid that is used to carry it out of the building. So we have liquid now for the first time flowing through each of the components could be in each of these cabinets, picking up the heat from the heat source and bringing that heat back, transferring it to another liquid. We also have the loop of air passing through the cabinets. Now there's two reasons that this could be happening. We have potentially IT equipment that is not liquid cooled that requires air cooling, or the liquid cooled device is not 100% liquid cooled. There's still a fan running. Maybe it's only running at 20% of the speed that it would have run if it were purely air cooled, but there still might be a fan with some flow of air required to keep some of the components cool that liquid cannot pick up the heat from. So we have a true hybrid situation here where we have the two loops, one air and one liquid picking up the heat from the source. This diagram, of course, represents immersion cooling, which simplifies things in a number of ways. We now, there, there's, there's no air cooling possible here. Everything is immersed in a tank and 100% of the heat that is produced by the components that are in the tank is picked up by a liquid. And there's a number of different liquids that are used. I'll talk about that a little bit more in a moment. Uh, but these liquids um, pick up the heat from all the components that are in that tank. And then with another heat exchanger, uh, pass that heat to another liquid uh, that then is taking it out of the building. There might be a chiller involved. In most cases, there isn't. Um, depends on how the system is set up, but he needs he leaves the room through liquid and then ultimately rejected to the atmosphere as before.